everybody welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome my name is Vanessa and today for you guys I'm going to be showing you my gluten-free pretzel recipe along with my gluten-free beer cheese recipe yes I was going to wait for Oktoberfest for this but I couldn't wait and when I can't wait and I find something great I have to share it with you guys so just little warning for everybody who is not 21 and older this will be having alcohol in it don't worry for those of you who have little kids and stuff you don't have to put the alcohol in it you don't have to put the beer in it but for the video's sake 21 and older hello everybody else goodbye bye I will see you guys in my next video <laughs> But no, promise you guys this one is freaking bomb, like bomb.org. Like I said, I was going to wait to show you guys, but I just, I couldn't. And this thing was delicious. They tasted exactly like pretzels and they tasted exactly like beer cheese. It was perfect. I did find a gluten-free cheese, cheese, gluten-free beer for you guys. If you guys have been gluten-free for a while, you probably already know about it. I will be showing you it here in a couple of clips, but it is very light super easy to taste. There's a couple of other gluten-free um, beers out there that I think you guys might like, but this is the one that I used. This was the one that was closest to me to use. So yeah, if you guys are new to my channel, hi, hello, my name is Vanessa. No, I am not a chef. No, I'm not a cook. I'm just an average girl who had to go gluten-free. And because of that, I feel like we shouldn't have to miss out on anything, right? Is it just me? But that's how I feel. Sorry if you guys can hear a whole bunch of noises and sorry about this thing. I had to get blood taken today. So if you guys see, that what are you gonna do but yeah so I feel like we shouldn't have to miss out on anything and because of that I kind of put a whole bunch of stuff together and then I film it for you guys for anything that worked out perfect and sometimes even for things that kind of failed and then I throw my failures in there a little bit but if there's anything you guys are looking for go ahead and check the playlist down below I have a whole bunch of stuff like we're talking Thanksgiving we're talking donuts and bread and bagels and English muffins and holidays and what I eat in a day is I have all kinds of stuff. So go ahead and check it out down below. And other than that, if you guys would like to see how I make my gluten-free pretzel recipe, then go ahead and keep on watching. Oh, and the beer cheese. Let's not forget the beer cheese. That's the best part. Just get to the video. So if you guys have watched my bagel recipe, it's almost the exact same thing. We're switching one thing in it. Other than that, all the ingredients are the same so if you guys haven't seen that video you guys can go ahead and watch that one also that will also also how many times can i say also <laughs> it will be in the playlist as well that i am linking down in the description but of course just like every other video if i go too fast or i don't get to something all the ingredients and measurements will be on the screen and in in the description box plus i'm going to try to walk you through it so in this one, we are going to get a bowl. We're gonna get some warm water. Make sure it's not too hot because when we put the yeast in, we don't want it to kill the yeast. If it does, you're gonna have to start all over, unfortunately. It's not bad. We basically just let it sit there and then we forget it. But you also have to add sugar to that water because the yeast needs something to feed it. And usually that is either sugar, honey, whichever. But we're gonna do sugar. It's only a tablespoon, it's fine. But when we get to it, we need it to get frothy. So we're gonna set that aside, put it in a, a warm-ish area of the house, nothing too, too hot. Um, we just set it on the counter because we live in Arizona and it's warm enough in the house. <laughs> but then in a big mixing bowl, and we're gonna use a stand mixer for this. You guys can use a hand mixer. It's just make sure you, make sure you're careful with your bowl, hold on to it. But basically we're gonna add the flour, we're gonna add baking powder, we're gonna add salt, and if your flour does not have xanthan gum, this is when you will add it. If your flour does have xanthan gum, do not add it. No xanthan, it doesn't need it because the flour already has it. I've made that mistake with my cookies, and um, for those of you who knew, or who are new, um, I have a real big issue with gluten-free cookies because the xanthan gum is a pain in the booty. So just saying me and cookies, we have issues. But these, it worked out without it. But like I said, if your flour does not have xanthan, go ahead and add it at this point. Um, and then mix it together and make sure you scrape down the sides. That way everything gets well incorporated. And then we're going to melt down a half stick of butter and we're gonna let it cool before we start adding it to the yeast because we don't want to kill it. So let it cool a little bit, not to where it gets hard, just, you know, it, to where we we could touch it with our finger, but we don't want it to get hard again But we also don't want to pour it in when it's too piping hot. It will kill the yeast 
This is what your yeast is supposed to look like. I'm adding the butter to this and then I'm adding some molasses. Now in my bagel recipe, I used honey. I like the honey for the bagels because it turned out a little bit sweeter. But for these, we want it to be a little bit more savory. So we use molasses. You could still use honey, that's okay. Completely fine if you're gonna make like cinnamon ones or more of the sweet flavor, it might work out even better. But we're gonna use molasses for this one. And then we're gonna give it a good stir together and then we're going to add the wet ingredients to the, the dry ingredients in the stand mixer. Now, we spilled a little bit of it in the beginning because we were trying to get a shot for you guys. If any of this happens, don't worry. If you guys are new, I've said in a couple of videos, gluten-free baking is an art form. We have to relearn how to do everything. It's nothing that we've ever learned before. So it's all about trial and error, but it is very forgiving. Surprise, surprise. You can work with it. So we put the stand mixer on medium and we were noticing that even as long as we were going for, it was not getting like a cookie dough context, uh, texture, which is what it's supposed to get cookie dough. That's what we want. I tell you guys in other videos, gluten-free baking is kind of hard to go just off of measurements because if you use one thing different than me, the flour, the xanthan gum, whatever, it will turn out different. It just depends on the ingredients that you use. So go by texture, not by measurements. Of course, follow the measurements, but go by the texture. So in this one, we put it on medium and we were stirring it for a good while and it was not getting to the it would just stayed hard. It was more clumping together. It wasn't really getting to a cookie dough. So we added a little bit of warm water at a time. Go for it. If this is what's happening to you, just add it slowly. You see how we keep mixing and then it turns into this whipped like texture. You see, like that's why I was trying to keep it in for this, these couple clips. I wanna show you guys kind of what we go through. That way you guys can see if you guys mess up and it doesn't look like mine, it's fine. We can add water, everything will be okay. So just add little bits of warm water until you get that texture. So don't even worry about it. And then on a floured surface, this is our poor attempt on trying to get those those rolls. And you know what? It wasn't it wasn't working. I don't know how they do those little flippy things that like Wetzel pretzels and all that stuff. I don't know how they do it. So here's my attempt. That was my husband and now here's me and I couldn't do it. I made them super fat and super thick and it, I was adding flour left and right and it just it wasn't working. So you know what? I got tired and I was like, you know what? We're going to make pretzel bites. We're going to make little circles. It works and it did work. It was fine. Just I'm letting you know this texture, as you can see right here, I'm getting fed up at this point. <laughs> but this texture of the flour, it does turn like the reason I was having so much trouble is because it wasn't holding when I had crossed the pretzel. It kind of unwind the moment that I boiled them. You'll see what I'm talking about. And then because I was over it and we're making little circles instead, we're going to put them on plastic wrap and then we are going to let them proof. Surprise, surprise, gluten-free baking does proof a little bit. But we usually turn on the oven. Um, we didn't right now because it's warm when I'm making these, but if it's like during the winter when you guys are watching this or the fall and it's cold out, put the oven at like 200, turn it off, kind of like right in the beginning of you doing all of this, like right in the beginning of the video. And then, turn it off, put them in there after it's come back down in temperature. We want it to be a little warm, not to cook them and not to kill the yeast, just a, just a little bit. But right now it's hot in Arizona. We just put them in the oven just to give them a little bit more, you know, time to puff up a little bit. And then once they proofed, I wanna say we proofed it for about 30 minutes to an hour. I don't remember exactly, but you'll see them start to puff. If you want them even more and you notice that they stop puffing, then go ahead and take them out and then you can do your little boiling thing. So right here we have a pot, we have boiling water, and then we added some baking soda to this and we're gonna dip them in the jacuzzi right here and then you're gonna see that they puff up a little bit. And then we're gonna take them off and we're gonna put them on a tin foil wrapped baking sheet and we're gonna kind of kind of let everything sit and set for a second. So as you can see, this is the one, it was the big guy. It stayed together, but I'm gonna show you a couple clips where they fall apart the moment you put them in this thing. Oh, and preheat your oven to 425. <laughs> Sorry, just had to throw that clip in there a little bit. But right here, basically you're gonna see here in a second that the little ones that we were working on, the moment you start boiling them, they just fall apart. So I would say make them bigger, thicker if you're going to try to wrap them like that. The little ones, these right here, 
it just starts to it, it doesn't hold they're not pressed together right this is my husband's but we're not gonna tell him no it's fine it was all trial and error which is fine like i said it's completely fine don't get me wrong we still ate these it just fell apart it wasn't cute for the pictures you know they're not gonna make the scene in this video they're still cute and all but they're like the background back, background act actors and stuff like I can't even talk I'm trying to make a joke but we did do twist we did pretzel twist and those held very good in this boiling whole mixture right here so you can do twist if you would like we used um, pretzel bites you guys can use whatever you want or if you guys are great at doing this little twisty naughty thing go for it just make them a little bit thicker and make sure that the twist are actually like make sure they're pressed together as best as you can like these they held the little knots they held but the other ones didn't so just just food for thought right there Now, once you take all of these off and you put them on the sheet from behind right here, um, you're gonna do an egg wash and then we put coarse salt on ours, but you can do whatever you want for the topping. You could do everything bagel seasoning, you could do cinnamon and sugar, and you could do whatever you want. So go for it, have fun with this, add cheese, add whatever you would like. But then we're gonna pop these in the oven and we're gonna let them cook for about 20 to 25 minutes, longer if you need to, until they're golden brown. Just please don't burn them. They do kind of get a little bit golden. We tried doing little crisscrosses and stuff on them. It didn't really make a difference. So, but you can, you can do little crosses on them. You can even make these into buns if you want to. But yeah, so we're gonna bake them and then we're gonna work on the beer cheese, which is why I know you guys are here. This is the beer I used really good there's a couple others but this is the one that i found that was closest to me in the stores and stuff really good beer if you guys don't like beer just omit this part it's completely fine but this is the one that i recommend it's super light just to drink on your own so if you guys are looking for a gluten-free beer enjoy it have it with your friends family and enjoy you know the weekends and stuff but that's a really good one so we're also going to melt down a stick of butter now if you guys are new to my channel um, I did make around Thanksgiving, I made gluten-free mac and cheese, and it's kind of the same thing. So we're gonna make like a roux. Um, of course, it's a little bit different, but if you guys wanna check out that video, once again, they will all be down in the playlist. I have a whole bunch for you guys. And then we're going to add the gluten-free flour and give it a little whisk, and we're gonna just keep whisking and adding it slowly. I think I did about a fourth of a cup. Um, do not let the flour burn. If you start to see it turn brown, you have to babysit it so try to have all of your stuff next to you that you're gonna add like right here I'm adding spices and you can add whatever spices you want go for it um, a little secret though add mustard you can use spicy mustard you can add honey mustard you can add whichever but mustard gives it that little zip that it needs so try not to get rid of that part it does make it taste a whole lot better but yes babysit this because the moment that the flour burns it's ruined I know because if not you you taste like burnt flour on in it's just, it's not good it's not good I made the mistake learn through my mistakes um, try not to let it burn if you have to turn on a lower heat go for it um, and then at this point we're just gonna kind of keep mixing babysitting and then we will I'm trying to think of what part is next this is how much I babysit it like this is I'm only speeding it up a tiny bit for you guys but that's it like I I don't really I'm not I don't stay away from this when I'm mixing it if that makes sense but you're gonna start to see it clump up and then add some milk just add it slowly it's gonna clump up we want it to clump up and then we're gonna get it all loose again so just add as much as you need I think I added about a cup and a half maybe two cups I don't really remember right now <laughs> but you'll see me I just add slowly and just look for the texture that's what I mean. We're just gonna make it nice and creamy. We want it to be not too thick. You know, you don't wanna put a pretzel in your mouth and have it be like really thick and like goopy. 
but we want it to be creamy. So just kind of keep adding milk slowly as time goes on. You can add half and half, you can add uh, heavy cream, whichever, but I used milk in mine. And then we are going to add cheese. Go for it on the cheese. Add whichever ones you want. I just use sharp cheddar, but you guys can use whatever. I try to convince my husband to do Monterey Jack and he was like, no, let's not, you know, let's not ruin it. But I think it would have been perfect. You can use pepper jack, you can use whatever you want. Go for it. But I think I used about an entire block. Yeah, we used a lot. And you just go to taste. So I just started tasting slowly to see where I wanted my cheese flavor. Um, and then I also did the same thing for the, the beer. I added beer slowly until I got the desired cheese and beer mixture. So add as much as you need, add as little as you want, add different cheeses, go for it. Have fun, make this your own, make it something that you, your family, your friends, whoever is gonna enjoy this with you, that you guys are gonna enjoy it together. So just go for it, add whatever seasonings, everything. You guys, just let this be like a, blu a blueprint. Look, can't even talk again, but yes, let it just have fun. Use your creativity. <laughs> but then basically we're just gonna keep mi mixing this. I added more salt on this part and we're gonna get it nice, hot, creamy, and then you're gonna turn it off and let it cool a little bit. But make sure you eat it kind of warm. If you're reheating it though, just add a little bit of milk to it and you should be able to stir it right back up when you're reheating it. So other than that, let it kind of simmer, get up to temperature, make sure it doesn't burn, keep whisk whisking it, and yeah. You know, when I did this close up, all I thought of was like, oh yeah. Like a burger, like an old Burger King commercial or something where they're like, do you like cheese on your burger? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I had to taste test it. And then right here, I'm gonna show you guys, ignore my boo-boo on my, uh, my finger, but I'm gonna show you the texture. Look at that. It's nice, it's golden, it's rich. Oh, it was freaking fantastic. But you guys have to let me know if you try this, give it a shot. I thought they turned out awesome. And yeah. Let me know, and I hope you guys enjoy them. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked it, please give me a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe if you guys haven't already. But if not, that's fine. You're welcome back anytime. And like I said, if there's anything that you're looking for, please leave it down below, and I will either try to do it, or you might be able to find it down in the playlist. So that's it for this one, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.